Welcome to worship here at St. John's on this Christmas Eve. We begin with our call to worship. Stand. Siblings in Christ, the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. Glory to God in the highest. A savior has been born to us, Emmanuel, God with us now and forever. Glory to God in the highest. He is the light that no darkness can extinguish. He is the mercy that knows no end. Glory to God in the highest. With Mary and Joseph, angels and shepherds, let us draw near to worship and adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we here on earth may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading is from the ninth chapter of Isaiah. This, promise, this poem promises the people deliverance from Assyrian oppression, a hope based on the birth of a royal child with a name full of promise. While Judah's king will practice justice and righteousness, the real basis for faith lies in God's passion for the people. The prophet makes clear that the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. People of God, listen for the word of the Lord. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping, tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. We will establish and uphold it 
with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ.
One of the elements of worship I miss most tonight is the gospel procession. That journey of the word into the very midst of the worshiping community. I miss seeing you face to face as I follow the cross down the aisle. I miss seeing you literally turn toward the good news. I wonder, have you ever noticed all of the references to sight in the beloved text that we proclaim on Christmas Eve? The first reading begins with the words, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And in the Gospel from Luke, the first thing the angel says to the shepherds is, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. When the angels leave them, the shepherds say to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass. And after their visit to see the child, the shepherds returned to their flock, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. There is much more being referenced here than physical sight. This seeing is revelation. It's a deepening awareness of the startling presence of God in a broken and sinful world. Some years ago now, in a group of pastors gathered to discuss Advent and Christmas preaching, one of them, who had served in a very unusual and challenging setting, spoke to this emphasis on sight that we find here. She had served for a time as a chaplain at the Center for Victims of Torture in St. Paul, Minnesota. The rest of us leaned in as she described what it was like to sit and talk with people who had been tortured, people upon whom great pain had been inflicted intentionally by someone who knew exactly what they were doing. The tortured, she said, are told again and again that no one can hear their cries, that no one knows where they are, that no one remembers them, and no one cares about them. They are people whose sense of self is, over time, greatly diminished. She said that she learned the most helpful thing to say when face to face with someone working through this unspeakable pain was simply, I see you. I see you. That simple phrase acknowledged the worthwhile presence of that person and could help in undoing the effects of isolation and abandonment and the diminishment of self. Saying simply, I see you. Also connected the one who had been tortured to someone else, thus forming community. The one who had been tortured was no longer invisible, but part of a relationship. They were seen and valued by others. I see you. The gift of the Christ child, that is God's 
decision to wrap God's self in flesh and bone like ours, to be born poor, to know fully the joy and the sorrow of human existence, even to the point of being tortured, killed, and raised from death to life, all for love of sinners, is God proclaiming, I see you to each and every one of God's children, indeed to all of God's creation. In Jesus, from a depth of love that we will never fully grasp on this side of the grave, God comes face to face with our anxiety-riddled, weary world, saying, I see you. And on this Christmas Eve, this particular Christmas Eve, as we consider the losses we have endured in the past months, losses that have come as a result of racism and violence, forest fires, hurricanes, drought, derecho, and a global pandemic, a pandemic which has truly diminished the lives of so many are these not the three words we need most to hear tonight? I see you. They are what I need to hear. And perhaps what you need to hear as well. And as we gather around the manger, we hear them whispered into this hurting world, I see you. I see you is what God says in Jesus. I see your struggle to continue in faith as troubles multiply and prayers seem to go unanswered. I see you is what God says in Jesus. I see the bone-deep loneliness that fills your days as well as your nights. I see you is what God says in Jesus. I see your fear for yourself, for your loved ones, for your community, for your nation, and how it never completely goes away. I see you is what God says in Jesus. I see the temptation you face every day to take the easy path of self-centeredness rather than the harder road of sacrificial love for the sake of the neighbor. In the birth and the life and the ministry and the suffering and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, God proclaims, I see you not in order to judge or to punish, not in order to give a final ultimatum of obedience or else. No. God comes to us in Jesus. God sees our lives and our life together in detail in Jesus in order to bless and to restore. In Jesus. We know God's forgiveness for all those choices we make that are not on God's path but on our own. In Jesus, we know God's healing, and it is a deep healing that we need. In Jesus, we receive the gift of faith, for ours is waning, if we are honest about it, in Jesus, we have the promise that loss and fear and death do not have the last word. In Jesus, we know that the end is life, and it is life that is invading and overturning the world even now. We do not make God see us by anything we do or say. God chooses to see us in Jesus, to be Emmanuel, God with us forever, out 
of love. And that is the good news on this Christmas Eve. No matter how diminished we may think we are, or how diminished we may fear this community of faith is after such a long absence from one another, or how diminished this world has become riddled by this life-taking disease. God sees us and abides with us with forgiveness, with mercy, and with hope. And that, my dear friends, is reason enough to rejoice on this Christmas Eve. That is reason enough to sing tonight, even if it is an off-key solo, or duet, or trio, or quartet at the kitchen table, or from your recliner, or from the living room sofa. God has come face to face with us. And like the chaplain who sat with the victims of torture whose lives had been so diminished, with great love, God says, I see you and God stays. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me now with our profession of faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Joining our voices with Song of the Angels, let us now pray for the church, for the world, and all who are in need. The shepherds sing this day, Jesus is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. All heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Give your peace and rest to all the flocks in the fields and all who tend them. Come near to us in the beauty of the nighttime, the shining of the stars, and the hush of the world at rest. May the wonder of your awesome creation provoke our care of all the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. great. The angels sing peace on earth. Come quickly to still the discord of this world. Hush and bring your peace to the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire the leaders of all nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provisions for all in their care. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Mary sings melodies of comfort to her newborn child, bring rest and assurance to those facing struggle this night. Provide your safety to those who travel and shelter those who need warmth and nourishment, those without homes. Console and heal those who are afflicted with illness or injury and give your comfort and light to all who grieve the loss of a loved one. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Love sings through the sound of a new baby's cry. Bless new and expectant parents and those who adopt or give foster care to children in need. Surround all families of every shape and size with your love and with your grace. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of mercy, come quickly to us and embrace us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Thank you. Remember that that is a peace that is stronger than disease, a peace that is stronger than struggle, and a peace that is stronger than death. And it is ours. Take time to share that with the people you love and those you meet in these days. Peace for the divine Christ child. Sing me all. 
Let us pray. Holy God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, wonderful Counselor, at the birth of time, your word brought light into the world, and throughout the ages, you proclaim newness of life. For your wondrous word, we thank you, O God. We, we thank, thank you, O God. God. In the fullness of time, your word became flesh to shine in our world's darkness, to speak peace to all peoples, and to welcome us as members of your family. For your loving word, we adore you, O God. We, we adore, adore you, O God. God. Grant us now the gift of your spirit that held, nourished, and protected by your word, we may live as your children, bearing your goodness throughout the world. For your powerful word, we praise you, O God. We, we praise, praise you, O God. God. All glory to you, holy God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join me now in praying the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Let this old carol be our closing prayer. Be near us, Lord Jesus. We ask you to stay close by us forever and love us, we pray. Bless all the dear children in your tender care and fit us for heaven to live with you there. Amen. Go in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.